Aloha, it is February here in the garden, and that means it's time for another installment of our month by month series on what to do in your Hawaiian garden. February is one of my favorite months here in Hawaii. Makahiki season is ending. We're moving into the ku season, and that means it's coming into the time of action once again. The ohia blossoms are beginning to bloom. The crab spiders are starting to spin their webs. And overall, the rains are continuing their seasonal patterns of wet and dry here during this time of the year, with the days getting longer. And it's just a beautiful time with the day still being cool, but warming up just as much. Around now in February is a good time to sow seeds. But if you live in a wetter climate, you're going to want to have some sort of covered area for those seeds so they don't get hammered by the rains. It's best to find seed varieties that are locally adapted to our climate here in Hawaii. And a great resource for local seeds is the Hawaiian Seed Growers Network. You can find them online. They got all sorts of seeds from local growers across the islands for you to check out. This is a great time of the year to be able to experiment and try out new things that you were hoping to do last year but didn't get a chance to. If you got a new seed variety you want to check out, perfect. This is the time for you to experiment with what might grow better in your climate. Because one year we may try and grow a tomato that just doesn't do it, but we try a slightly different variety and that tomato might thrive. So you never know. It's always great to experiment and the spring season is a great time to try out new things. So why not? So let me give you a little list of what's good to sow right now here in February. We have basils, beets, bok choy, celery, carrots, chard, chives, dill, kale, leeks, lettuce, green onion, mustard, pigeon pea, long beans, wing beans, pole beans of all types, you name it. Radishes, shallots, Japanese greens such as tatsoi and pak choy. These are all great seeds to get going right now in your garden. If you have a covered area, a little bit of a greenhouse, you can even start tomatoes, peppers, eggplants. All these warm season crops can get an early start right now if you can keep them well protected and a little bit warmer during this time of year. Variety is key and in fact on my blog at homesteadinhawaii.com I do have a few posts that go over um, varieties of certain crops like zucchini or carrots or um, tomatoes so you can learn about new varieties to plant of your own. So when it comes to things to harvest this time of year, whew, this season is a pretty bountiful part of the season. I'm standing right here next to my Suriname cherry tree, uh, you can see that it is going off right now. Avocados, abiyus are getting another flush, bananas, cassava, Kalo, sweet potato, collards, cacao, little koi, kale, mulberries, sunflower, beets. Some people have pineapples growing right now. There's plenty of citrus, oranges, mandarins, lemons. All of those are pumping right now. You got leeks, poha berries, herbs such as basil and um, ginger, galangal, uh, cilantro, parsley. All those things are ready to harvest right now in our garden. We truly are blessed with abundance because that's not even it. We have daikon, okra, broccolini, Hawaiian chili peppers, bell peppers, celery, cherry tomatoes, dragon fruit, papaya, soursop, rambutan, pomegranates, cauliflower, coconuts, wee apple, star fruit, jabota kaba, zucchini, and Beyond that, there are cool season crops, things that grow in more temperate climates, like peaches ready for harvest right now, persimmons, figs, blueberries, strawberries. Gosh, all these things are still growing in the garden for the month of February. It's winter time, but there's so much abundance. All you gotta do is tap into it by beginning to grow. And beyond just the fruits and vegetables that are growing in the garden this time of year, we also have plenty of eggs being pumped out by our chickens. The fish are biting in the more protected areas out there if you're a fisherman. And it seems everywhere you look these days, there's a wild boar that's offering itself up for the harvest. They are running rampant, it seems, around here these days. You can also harvest limu and opihi. But if you do, be sure these are resources that are dwindling. So find some guidance from kapuna, 
people who have been doing it for generations who know how to um, tend to these um, sacred plants so that they grow and replenish. Opi and limu used to once be a staple in the diets of the Hawaiians and now um, it's there's barely enough for people to um, to eat. So if you go harvest and forage from the land, be sure to know what you're doing when you do it so that when you do harvest, you are proliferating it and extending its abundance for future generations. There is so much growing out here in our gardens here in Hawaii during the month of February that I barely even got through my list of what is ready to harvest right now. But lucky for you, I am working on compiling a resource month by month what to grow, what to harvest, and what to do in the garden that will be available soon. If you want to stay updated for when I have it finished and when it's ready for release, I may end up releasing chapter by chapter so that you have something now as opposed to later. Feel free to drop me a line, leave a comment down below, or you can email me at info at homesteadinhawaii.com and I'll be sure to put your name on a list to let you know when that's ready. So while you're waiting on that resource, now is a great time to get some work done in the garden that doesn't revolve around planting. I love to use this time of year to begin to spread some mulch and manure and compost that I don't normally do in the warmer months. So if you haven't already in the month of January, use this time to spread some mulch in the garden, feed your trees, feed your plants, feed your vegetable gardens, and get them ready for the upcoming season of growth. I've been continuing to do a lot of pruning around here. I've been pruning down my fruit trees. Some of them are getting too large and I like to have them stay a smaller size to keep them more manageable. I like to also squeeze more into my land. So uh, that is a strategy if you have a smaller place is to just do more pruning than you normally would have to if you had larger, larger acreage. So by pruning, I keep my trees small. The birds are less likely to attack my fruit and I am more likely to harvest because I can reach it. I like to make sure that just before that spring growth starts, that everything is pruned up so that the new flush of growth can, can, can have a great start without having to interrupt all of that. If you have any animals, this is a great time to check their enclosures, make sure that their fencing is still up to snuff, clean out their homes where they're bedding, uh, make sure that there's no uh, risks of any uh, diseases or, or whatnot. So make sure that everything is clean and looking tidy. I like to check my sheep hooves every six weeks to make sure that their hooves are nice and trimmed because that's where a lot of infection could come in. And uh, be sure to check your animals for any disease or sickness. Um, I uh, constantly scan to see uh, if there might be any worms or whatnot that my sheep have. Something like worms can go from not a problem to a big problem really quick. So you do want to be on top of your flock. And uh, during this time, before we get too busy uh, in our garden, is a good time to pay more attention to our animals. If you're thinking about building things, like building a greenhouse or a shed or something, right now, during this time of year, things are growing more slowly. So the garden is giving you more time, more time to do projects like that because before too long when summer comes things grow overnight and you won't have much time because you're gonna have to be keeping up with things in the garden so get that stuff done now you'll be thanking yourself later I also like to take this time to check my tools sharpen the blades on my mower make sure that everything is maintained uh, change any air, air filters or spark plugs that I might need to do or just you know just uh, make sure that everything is clean, tidy, and organized since I have a little more time. Maybe that's a rainy day and it's a great project that you can do indoors. Then other than that, um, just keep it on top of your weeds in the garden. Uh, make sure that uh, things don't flower that you don't want to flower and go to seed because if you let them do that, they will spread like crazy. So get them before they go to seed now's a good time and then just keep up with that but i'll tell you that having sheep has really made a difference with that in my garden i used to have tons of guinea grass and other plants that i did not want and the sheep have done a good job knocking them back they've also done a good job knocking stuff that i want back 
but they've done a good job stock knocking the stuff that I don't want back. And as always, stay on top of any pest problem you may have. The avocado a lace bug is dwindling right now. The leaves have mostly all fallen off and a new crop of leaves is starting to um, spring up. Make sure that you compost and mulch those trees heavily because they're gonna need the help. If you do have lace bugs, go ahead, spray it with a soapy pepper spray that tends to help. Do not use neem because you affect the flowers and the bees when you use that, but a sort of pepper soapy oil spray and that tends to take care of them pretty well. Things like citrus back here, I've, I've started to get an aphid infestation and aphids are farmed by ants. So you could put a, a sticky wrap around the trunk of the tree to start to try and keep ants from climbing up the tree. And you could also just spray the aphids off and maintain it that way. But a combination of the two would really help. If you got fire ants or termites or slugs, continue to mitigate those with whatever treatment you use to keep those guys at bay. An important thing to do is to have a variety of plants so that when one plant gets hit, you have a, always have another to count on. So February, I consider uh, crab spider season. If people are giving names to season, it's crab spider season in my garden. This is the month when they all start to spin their webs and you seem to get tangled up everywhere. Some people say that they bite. I've never experienced it. Uh, others want to just get rid of every spider they see. But these spiders provide a huge benefit to your garden. So don't go knocking down all these spider webs. The crab spiders are here. They're eating the pests and, and flies and bugs that you don't want in your garden. And before long, they disappear. They're mostly gone by the end of March. I just make sure that I have a pathway, but wherever else they are, they are free to do their thing. So don't get rid of all the crab spiders in your garden. Let them do their thing. And one last thing that you can do this time of year to protect your trees is to apply a tree paste or paint or whatever it is that you're comfortable using. Uh, there, some people put a latex paint on the trunk of their trees to protect them from sun scald and insect damage. Uh, in biodynamics, they have a tree paste where they use a mix of clay, manure, and a silica-based plant. Here in Hawaii, I would imagine it would be bamboo. In other places, they use equisetum or horsetail. Uh, but um, you can create a paste out of that and then apply it to the trunk of the tree. And that keeps the trunk uh, covered and protected from the sun and also keeps insects out of any possible openings that are in the tree. Oh man, I didn't even talk about all of the perennials that you could be planting right now. Sweet potato, kalo, cassava, uh, lemongrass, uh, ginger, galangal, basils, perennial basils, perennial uh, spinaches, all these things could be propagated and put into your garden right now. It's pretty much a matter of just sticking a cutting in to the ground and watching it root. It's really that easy. If you live in upper elevations, you could be experimenting with kiwi, peach, plum, persimmon, pears, apples, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries even, although those can be invasive. But all these plants, you could be growing at the higher elevations. There are even local growers here growing certain varieties of plants down closer to the coast where it's warmer, where they're getting peaches and persimmons, which is pretty amazing. If you have the room, don't be afraid to experiment. This time of the year is also a great time for propagating plants. I love to do air layering, air layering ulu or lychee, rambutan, uh, air layering bamboo. The moisture of this time of year really helps the air layer um, take a little bit better. Whereas in the summer when it's drier, they don't have as high of a success rate. You could also graft avocado and citrus trees or take cuttings of ava, bamboo, bele, moringa, or katuk. All these things are great to take cuttings of and uh, to propagate them out. And lastly, if you didn't fertilize this month, do it this month. Now's a great time to get some nitrogen-based fertilizers in there. Spring is when new growth is gonna start up. And so whenever you see new leaves growing on your plants, 
they're taking up nitrogen right now at this point. So be sure to feed them. When you see flowers like this mountain apple tree behind me, now's the time when they're switching over from leaf production to fruit production. So phosphorus is actually a better um, nutrient to be putting on a tree like a mountain apple. So if you have other trees flowering or fruiting right now, you may want to use that type of fertilizer for those trees. But like always, it's always best to get a soil sample to figure out what your soil needs. Or if you've been at it long enough, just keep an eye on your plants. And a lot of times they'll tell you what they need. All right, that's it, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I hope now that you um, got through this video, you have a clear idea of what to do in the garden for the month of February here in Hawaii. If you want more detail, once again, sign up. Leave a comment below with your email or email me at info at homesteadinhawaii.com and let me know that you might be interested in uh, getting that new ebook that I'm developing that'll go over 12 months in the Hawaiian garden so that you have a clear blueprint, a plan for how to move forward and how to grow abundance. All right, till next time, everybody. Ahoy ho, aloha.